Hello, my name is Adam Novak and welcome to 3D Printing 4.0 Tolerances and Margins in our 3D Printer. This will be very important as we proceed so we can print all sorts of types of clips and mechanical moving parts and assemble them and know exactly how they're going to fit together before we even print them. This will save us a lot of time and trouble and make us look a lot more professional when doing this for clients. It is important to get to know how your printer deals with overhanging angles. Here is an example of an object which I created myself which you can print at home. It is available in the link below. All it is is simply an object with increasing overhanging angles starting from 10 degrees going up in increments of 5 degrees of overhanging angles until it reaches a total of 80 degrees. It is important to make sure you're printing this obviously with no support material on so you can see how this object is printed without being supported. The next thing you need to do to investigate your printer's tolerances and margins is to print this object. You can print it in under 20 minutes quite easily and it can be found in the description link below. All this object is is a series of cutout holes, the top being semicircle, then square, then circle then a six-sided circle, or a hex head. The holes here denoted by 0.0, .0 are a 5mm hole, and they increase by 0.1mm each time until they go up to 5.3mm. And on the right they decrease by 0.1mm until they are as small as 4.8mm. The next thing we do is to print out the actual cutouts of these holes. The obvious one to print out first is the actual 5mm cutout. By doing this we can see which hole it actually correspondingly fits inside of. All of the cutout sizes are provided in the link description below, including the 4.8 to 5.3mm objects. Feel free to download and print them at your leisure, though do try at least one or two of them because it is important to get to know how your printer operates. Also try to print this object with different types of shells or infills. You might see a substantial difference to the size of the objects or the size of the holes themselves. Now let's have a look at this object after it's been printed and I'll investigate using my veneer calipers. The first thing I'll do is turn it on and home it and check that it's working properly by putting it back to its original position. Now if we look at the object printed itself, the holes start from 5mm to 5.1 to 5.2 to 5.3 so let's see how they actually turned out. Using the calipers to check the 5mm square hole it turned out to be 4.83mm which is a margin of error of 0.17mm, which is pretty good. The next hole is 4.99 instead of 5.1, which is 0.11, 5.07 instead of 5.2, which is 0.13. Then we're able to compare this to our circular holes. And our first circular hole, which is meant to be 5mm, is actually 4.76, which is a margin of 0.24. This might be unexpected, since the margin of the square was only 0.17 at its highest. But a circle has many fine points to define it, and when I actually created these holes, it actually only had 64 vertices to create the hole itself. I allowed this error to occur in the final print so that you could be aware of the limitations of the model and the 3D printer, and be aware of how to create the holes to get over these issues. Though by checking these next holes, I can see the same margin of error seems to take place. By knowing this, I can make these differences or changes in the 3D model so that I can print and be aware of its final outcome. The next thing we'll do is to use something of a known size to actually check these holes themselves. An obvious thing to use is a drill bit or the back of it. Use a veneer calipers to check its size and then try to see which hole it actually fits through. I'll go up an increasing size until it actually enters the hole. It gets a bit stuck until you get to the final hole, being the 5.3mm circular hole. At this point it fits in very nicely, but not all the way through. This is because there's often a bit of a squishing between the bottom layer and the bed itself. I remove this excess material simply by scraping with a razor blade gently, being careful not to use a razor blade towards my own body. If you did want to bore out the hole itself using something like a drill bit, I recommend warming up the drill bit using something similar to a lighter and then boring it out. This will prevent the chance of cracking in the object itself. 
though it's not necessary to get the drill bit too hot, just quite warm. And as we can see, just by removing the excess material from the bottom layer, the drill bit now fits through quite nicely. And now we can try an Allen key, or a hex head, which is a six pointed circle. This is 4.7 millimeters across. So we'll try to fit it into the smallest hex hole first. And as we might presume, it does not fit. Let's increase in size until we get one that does fit. And though it does fit into the one at five millimeters, it fits through much nicer at 5.1 millimeters, which is a difference in 0.4 millimeters to the real world. And as you can see here, it fits really nicely and turns the object very well. Though what you might be more interested in is how the objects 3D printed fits inside of themselves. These printed objects are actually the 4.8 millimeter versions of the cutout. By printing this one, we can simply increase the size until we find which one it fits into. I've added little handles or wings to these objects so they're much more easier to manipulate. And as we can see here, the first one it fits into easily without any cleaning is the plus two. So it took a difference or tolerance of plus four millimeters and it slides really easily in and out of the plus three millimeter one, which is a tolerance difference of 0.5 millimeters. So straight out of the 3D printer, I know that a 0.4 millimeter difference will work quite easily for these objects to make clips and other mechanisms. I'm now cleaning out the bottom layer of this square since I have not done that yet and we'll make sure this object can pierce straight through to the other side and I'm only cleaning the bottom layer. I'll put it through from back first and it fits through very nicely and I can take it back out. The next one I'll try are the circles and we'll see which one the circle fits into and again this is a 4.8 millimeter circle. If I fit into the 4.8 millimeter hole it doesn't fit I'll try straight to the 5.3 and it fits very well. So I might look to use a 0.5 millimeter difference for circular objects when printing. The most important thing to note about your 3D printer are that these margins are consistent. By knowing they're consistent, you can make adjustments for it in the model itself. And by doing this, we can sometimes reduce our margins of error by as low as 0.02 millimeters. What is also worth checking is printing a horizontal version of these rather than vertical and try to see how this operates in comparison to this vertical version. As we can see, it does not fit immediately, but again, it's the same issue. We need to clean the bottom layer. This can be done again with a quick clean of the razor blade, taking off the excess of the bottom layer and then reinserting it. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this. Um, stay in touch because once you get your mind around your 3D printer, we're going to start making some really cool things like um, your flying drones, walking robots, boats, gearboxes, gears, pulleys. It's up to your imagination and you know that already because you've got a 3D printer or you're looking at getting one and you know what they're capable of. So subscribe to stay in touch, otherwise support us on Patreon so I can keep making videos and try to have fun because that's the point of a 3D printer. Yeah.